Have you ever needed to do a bulk update with data that you're working with inside of your Canvas Power Apps? Well, I've got a solution for you. So what I'm going to do is show you an example of this where I have got a database table with tons of cars and I do have some cascading based on the make and the model. Now this is all sample data here, but in the make column, it says Chevrolet. But the users want to only see Chevy. I need to update all the Chevrolets and replace them with the new value of Chevy. Now back here in Canvas Power Apps, I've got essentially two lines of code. So the first line of code, it creates a collection that we're going to work with. And we're only going to filter back the records that we're interested in updating. And we do that with a filter, of course. Now there are four steps to this process. I've got the first two, but even the second one is optional. I just want to know how many I'm updating. So I'm going to go ahead and run this and I'm going to click on this button. It's going to go get the data and tell me how many records I have. Okay. So that's not too bad. It's only 72 records. I'd hate to see something like 2000 there, but that might be the situation you're working with. Okay. Now that I executed this code, I can double click on this variable. I can look at the data here. So we know this is the data that we would like to update and there should only be 72 records there. Very good. Now step three of this process, we're going to update the data that we have in memory. Okay. So this is step three here and we could have done a for all and done a patch and it still would have been super fast. I like update if for this particular purpose, notice that I give it the data source, which is this in memory collection. I'd like to update. Now the second parameter, I just put a true there, which means, Hey, I want to update them all. There's no criteria. I've already done my criteria here. I would not have wanted to go get all of the vehicles and then updated them here. That would have been very inefficient. And last time I checked, I've got 10,000 records in that SharePoint list. So as long as the second parameter is true, this function is going to update all the records. Now, what value are we changing? We're just going to change the make to be Chevy. Now let's see how fast that is. I want to hit the button. Hey, there we go. We got 72. Now at this point, we really don't need to know that there's 72. I'm going to go back on the code and I think I'm going to just cut this out. Now what I'm going to do to check this step and you can either click in a variable or double click select it all. And you're going to get this little preview of the data. So what I'm looking for here is to see if the make has been updated in our collection. So you see now it says Chevy. Okay. That's good. Now, if we're going to update 72 records here, since we know it's 72, what do you think the best way of doing that is? Should we do a for all and inside the for all do a patch? Well, think about this. If we were to do that, we would be hitting the database or making a round trip to the database 72 times. And even a regular patch with just one record, it could take up to <laughs> a second. Maybe it's a, hopefully it's a few milliseconds, but I've seen patches uh, take anywhere between one and, and three seconds. So that's something definitely we don't want to do and wait for all that to happen. Okay. So the uh, last portion of this is still to use patch. Now, if you're familiar with the patch function, it has three parameters, but there's an undocumented way that you can use patch, which is you name off the data source. So this is the name of the SharePoint list. And we're going to make an update there with this in memory collection. Now, as long as the IDs are the same, the primary key, as long as the IDs are the same between those two, it will know which ones are going to be updated. Now, keep in mind that if we <laughs> if we wanted to delete all the Chevrolets and we were to say delete if let's actually remove if you see that it would not go through. And of course, it has different parameters. I'm going to hit control Z because those records are completely removed. This is not a good way of doing a mass purge of records. Okay. So that would be a, another video where I would show you how to do that. But uh, right here, we're just going to do just a mass update. Now 
for new records, we could have added tons of new records and that would have worked here. Their IDs would be null or blank. And then SharePoint would understand, oh, these need to be added. Okay, so there are some ways that you can use this. And most of the time, you're just trying to update a bunch of records. Now, let's see if this actually works. Now, if you ever trying to do this trick and you notice that it's saying, hey, the you know, we're expecting something else here. We're expecting a record, but really we're giving it a table value. And if you get an error here, what you want to make sure is that you didn't use any type of add columns or anything here. Cause once you modify the columns, add columns, remove columns, that type of stuff, show columns, it's going to change the schema. And if you modify the schema in any way, that's going to freak out this undocumented <laughs> feature a patch. So in that case, you would want to drop any, uh, you know, columns uh, that were added or handle that in some way. Now let's see how long this takes. I'm going to run this and it's going to do everything all over again, including that patch. And I'm looking for the champagne bubbles, which we do see there and boom, they just disappeared. Have you ever been able to update 72 records that fast? Now, if you love this video content, you're probably going to love the uh, Power FX coding course that uh, I do have available. We go over all kinds of algorithms and coding projects that would apply to almost any project. You might want to take a look at the video on the right side of your screen now, or even the left side. So I've got two that I've carefully picked out for you.